You're listening to the B2B Growth Think Tank, the show that brings you the virtual hot seat where each week my expert guests and I help another business leader by masterminding actionable solutions to a specific challenge they're currently trying to solve in their business. So if you're looking for answers to a specific challenge that you're facing, that if you could solve in the next 90 days would have a huge impact on your growth, send it in to thinktank at thinklikeafish.co.uk and we'll see if we can feature you on the show. My name is Adam King, your host and the captain of the ship of growth consultancy Think Like a Fish. And if you're ready to rethink what's possible for your business and discover the growth strategies, advice and insight to turn this new vision into a reality, let's get started. Hey, Adam here. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to quickly let you know about my Growth Accelerator implementation program. Now, this is ideal for owners or directors of established B2B or professional service firms who want to generate more revenue in less time while lowering marketing costs. And it's especially ideal for those who are sick and tired of the hype and false promises who instead like the idea of working with a partner that puts skin in the game with you and guarantees results. Now, if that is you, then the Growth Accelerator implementation program could be the perfect solution to setting you on the path to sustainable growth. Because when you partner with me for 90 days, I'll help you implement a simple and scalable business development system that is guaranteed to generate at least 500,000 of new revenue for your business in the next 12 months. And if you like the sound of this, make sure you visit thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash accelerator and watch the short video that explains how it all works. But before you go and do that, let's get to today's episode. This is the virtual hot seat section of my interview with Bill Pratter, where Bill and I will be coming up with some ideas and solutions to a listener challenge that has been sent in. So make sure you go and check out the full episode that I did with Bill. But until you do that, here is today's virtual hot seat. What I'd love to jump onto now is to take some of that experience, take some of that wisdom, and let's go and help somebody out that is is facing a growth challenge right now. And uh, we'll jump onto the uh, onto the virtual hot seat. So today's question has uh, come in and it's an interesting one um, because I think in light of the current situation, maybe a lot of us are going through something similar or we feel that we've been in this or, or, or experiencing this situation. So the the challenge has come in and name redacted, um, preferred not to be named, but I do know that this is a PR firm. So the challenge is we have recently lost a few large contracts due to COVID. These contracts have been big enough to keep us busy um, for the last few years, but it's may also made us quite lazy in keeping our name out there. And we haven't had a serious private inquiry for months now, and it's starting to feel like we're starting all over again. What would you do? So first thoughts on that. Well, uh, so that was, uh, uh, so you, you had shared the question with me earlier. So I have thought about it a bit. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to, to answer the question so that everybody including the woman that asked that question would uh would be able to benefit and that is first i mentioned earlier that uh we are pro i use the word program what I, what i mean by that is we've been taught over and over and over again uh to do various things uh and it's helpful for example so we're we don't have to think very much about driving a car. We did when we first learned. It was extremely difficult and complicated. But now you don't think about it. All you think about is going, getting to such and such a place and you go do that. Back to our business, we've been programmed and we still are. There's huge, huge pressure to, fall, to be a lemming, to follow the crowd, to listen to the experts, to be ordinary. And so part of that is the environment we're in is a crisis caused by a pandemic, right? No, that's not it. It's just another uh, adversity that's in your way that came from outside. It's got nothing to do with you. And so your choices are deal with the, with the circumstance as is, i.e. deal with the hand that you're dealt or forget about that notion and go, as Adam, as you just said, that little, I envision red fish, a little red fish leaving the school and doing it differently. So that's kind of part one is 
whatever in the world everybody else is doing in the PR industry or whatever industry you happen to be in with a similar sort of a situation, don't follow the industry because they're all just in the middle of that bell curve. They're all average. They're doing what the average does. So instead, be that red fish, jump out and do something differently. And maybe the first thing, Adam, you kind of teed it up. And that is maybe those are the wrong clients in general, because one thing is clear about those particular clients, they are lemmings. They are following the crowd. If you think about it, in a situation like this, you should be double spending on, on public relations. You shouldn't be backing away. That's where you need help so that you've got a customer that doesn't understand the value proposition. Now, I don't know your company, uh, but, but probably if you look through the lens uh, of the industry, you've positioned yourself as a PR company that's involved in the uh, this part of this industry that does things in a certain way. I don't know, with certain logos and brand statements and taglines and whatever in the world it is that 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 the industry does. If you're going to be successful in this environment, in fact, any other environment, you've got to reinvent the whole approach. You're, you've got to be able to say to people, well, people think we're a PR firm, but we're not a PR firm. What we are is we're somebody that bridges the gap between current circumstances and the dream. That's it. And uh, they said, well, how do you do that? Well, question is, are you concerned about the way we do it or the result? Well, the result, good. Then I'll just imagine that I'm doing it with magic. So I think the overall lesson there is, uh, on, on, uh, let's call that one third of the answer. And that is, Forget about the circumstances that you're that you're given. Look in it through a different prism, which could include firing the client. Could be the wrong client. Maybe this is a signal like me getting fired. It's a signal that maybe you're in the wrong ball game. Well, that's there the thing, are, isn't it? Because you can you you can sort of look mm -hmm. at the situation and and yes, you are seeing things in crisis mode. And there was an element of that that came through the question. It was right. We are suddenly left with zero pipeline, and what do I do? You know, and and you can almost sort of see them, you know, sitting there going, right? Do I go in now and and try and sort of spend money over here or do it over here? Do I get on LinkedIn? Do I you know, Clubhouse or whatever it is that's going on at the moment? You can almost see that sort of panic going on. So the first thing yeah. is, as you say there, Correct. breathe, take a step back and just maybe take half a day if you've got a team. And actually now is the time to start questioning, is our offer relevant to the market? And if it's not, how do we change it? And if you need to know how to change it or what to change it to, the best thing you can do is define who you want that client to be and go and have a conversation with them find out their problems. What is it that you're trying to achieve? It doesn't even have to be specifically garnered around the PR side of things and what they're doing. Find out what they are struggling with, what their goals are, all that kind of thing. And you can then get a picture of what their day looks like, what their business looks like, what things are happening that you can actually start to see how the skills that you have can support their goals and their objectives. And then you can start crafting more of an offer. It may well be your existing offer. Yep, it's perfect. It However, you don't know. Well, that. earlier on, you actually brought this up. Excuse me. I, 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 I cut you off and I, I apologize. That's all right. Keep going. Okay. So earlier on, you actually said, uh, avoid the trap of tactics. And uh, so uh, back to programming, may, most of us have been taught when we were young, uh, you're in the, uh, your house, you're parents are there and, and one of your siblings drops a glass of milk. All of a sudden you hear, Adam, get up and do something about that. You jump up. What? And, and you run around the house and you, you get a broom and you do all that stuff. We're programmed to jump up and take Adam, what you just said, so beautiful. You want to do the exact opposite. Don't jump up. Don't do anything. For heaven's sakes, don't get seduced by somebody's sh new shiny penny, i.e. sales page. And instead, take a breather, go someplace, sit down by yourself or your team, and reinvent what you're doing. Uh, reinvent it totally. In fact, uh, don't do anything. Just sit there and let the universe give you some input if you want. 
But for sure, don't go sweep up that broken glass yet. Make sure you figure it out. Like, for example, maybe you should get some shoes on before you walk out there in that field of broken glass. Yeah, absolutely. And and maybe something a little bit more tangible that they could do that while they're also doing this could be, I guess, you know, I know this person, they, they, they do have a book of clients. They do have people that they are still serving. It's just that their big contracts have gone. So one of the things that, they, that, that could happen is, is, is go and have these kind of conversations with your existing clients. It's almost like interview your existing clients and find out what's going on in their business because what you, you, you will undoubtedly know this. Your biggest asset is your existing client base, but more importantly, it's the relationship you have with that client base. If you can go in and be shown to be curious and trying to find out more ways of supporting them, they will tell you what they need. There's no need to go out there and do um, you know, some sort of fancy marketing campaign because if you've got an asset that's existing right in front of you, they will give you a lot of these answers. So set up, um, you know, we used to do things like boardroom briefings where we get, uh, you know, a bunch of clients around, a, around a table. We can't do that, but you could get them onto a zoom call if you wanted to do it as a group thing and have a conversation and just say, we know that you guys are in a similar sort of space. Tell us about what's going on in your business. What's going on? What is the industry? How do you see things going? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can find out so much information because you are putting yourself in an environment and you're normalizing it. So that you can be the two ears and one mouth and you can actually hear what's going on. And then you can take what you learn, strategize with your team and say, right, interesting. We've got something that we think could actually help you solve all of the challenges or some of the challenges that you said you had going on your business. Are you open to hearing about it? Like do that with a few clients. There's almost certainly something there because I always say that there is almost undoubtedly within either your existing client base or your network, six to seven opportunities of hidden growth opportunities. You've just got to know how to open the doors to the conversations that will create them. So that's what I would do. Um, anything, any sort of final thoughts on that? Oh, I agree totally with what you just said. I use a tool for that. Uh, so uh, think about an X, Y uh, graph, if you will, uh, love on one scale and gross margin or gross profit in the other. And then just plot all your clients on there. And, and what you want to do uh, as a business owner is you want to deal with as many as you possibly can customers, clients that you love your relationship with them and who give you a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, gross margin or revenue or however, however you want to measure that. Uh, I remember a time, uh, a little quick story about a client of mine in the fruit business. And one of their clients was a company called Walmart. Now, Walmart has a reputation of being absolutely brutal on vendors. That's a reputation. So I'm with this client uh, and I asked them to plot all their clients on this love profit scale and Walmart ranked low on love and, did, and they didn't make any money. So the choices are forget about doing business with Walmart because they don't make any money. And, and also you, you, uh, you uh, uh, don't like working with them. Okay, so they say to me, what would you do, Bill? And I said, well, I'd go talk to Walmart and ask them how you can be the number one fruit vendor. I, they said, as simple as that. I said, simple as that. Go ask them. They'll tell you. So they did. They went down and had a meeting with Walmart. And they said, hey, how could we be number one? And, uh, and I got lots of stories like that, you know, hundreds of these. But it's the same story. It's the one you just teed up. So when you're with somebody in an envir environment in, like that, and, and you say, how can we blank? How can we rise to number one in your eyes? How can we help you reach your goal? Anything, how can we? People will say, well, you could blank. So Walmart told them exactly what to do, and they did it. So today, Walmart ranks in this company number one on love, meaning the most fun to do business with and the most profitable company they have. And so that's a tool that everybody should use all of the time. Gr graduate to the upper right corner where 
all of the high profit and high love exists. And I think the, uh, the, the, the real sort of summary around all of that is it's beautiful because I, it's something that I'm, I've learned the hard way. And it's been said before in a number of places, but it's, it's so like it, one of the, the, the big lessons that I'm learning is the quality of your outcomes is determined by the quality of your questions. Most people don't ask questions. It's a little bit like your example, right? At the beginning about being told to have a house in uh, Palo Alto. You didn't ask the question. Why? Oh, right. Most people are either scared to ask a question or they don't know the right question to ask because they're not comfortable enough to hear the answer. Good way to put it. So one of the key things that you can do is go and ask questions, actually talk to your market, your clients and all the rest of it, even the ones you don't like working with, or even the ones that you've had a sketchy relationship, because you actually want to hear the negative answers. How can we do better? What can we do to improve? You should talk to prospective clients too and, and say, I'm not coming to make a sales question whatsoever. I'm doing some market research. Would you be interested in participating? Yeah. And you go and you say, hey, if you were to uh, found a public relations firm, what would, it, what would you want it to do for you? Mm. And they'll tell you what they want. Yeah. Lo and behold, new product, new service. Oh, yeah. And, and it's such a, you know, sometimes these simple things are the most effective, but sometimes it's the thing between our ears that make it the hardest to do. Go and ask questions, talk to people. So yeah, I, that's a fascinating, I, I hope that has helped the lady that sent this in and um, I will be making sure that she, uh, she, she knows that it's been featured. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you got some great ideas that you can take away and apply to your business to help you grow. If you did, please share it with somebody else that might also find this valuable because they will thank you for it. Also, to let you know that I have a podcast gift page where I put a lot of resources that I love to share with my listeners. You can find the links to join the Facebook community there and you can get my book, The Conversational Relationship Marketing and the audiobook version all for free, plus a number of other resources I'll be adding over time on that page. So make sure you head there to thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift and you can help yourself to the things that make most sense to you and if you have enjoyed the show please make sure you're subscribed you'll get updated as the new episodes come out and finally last favor please consider giving the show your honest rating and review on apple podcasts i read every single one they mean the world for me i love hearing from my listeners and it does help others find the show as well so if you want to go and do that i'd really appreciate it but until next time have an awesome day and we'll speak soon